Um, so highlight all of those. All of these books are famous commentaries on the Quran in Arabic. So all of them that he mentioned here, uh, At-Tabri, Abu Sa'ud, Ibn Ashur, Al-Raghil Al-Asfahani, Al-Biqai, Al-Razi, Al-Alusi, Al-Zamakshari, Al-Samin, Al-Halabi, Al-Baydawi, Al-Kawnawi, Ibn Kathir, Abu Hayyan, Al-Andalusi, Sheikh Zada, Ibn Munayyar, uh, Al-Suyuti, Al-Wahidi, Al-Qurtubi, Al-Zajjaj, and others. All of these are famous books of tafsir of the Quran, which when added are tens over a hundred volumes when you put them all together of just explanation of the Quran. Some by narration, some by language, some related to rulings, some spiritual, different types of tafsirs for different meanings of the verses. And having recourse to all that when you're making your explanation. Mm. And that's what the author did with his teacher. And others familiar to those who know the literature or mm. would care to peruse the biographical, I'm sorry, the biographical notes appended immediately after the main body of the translation. Mm. When they finished, the translator saw that his acquired facility and Sheikh Ali's knowledge and skill had increased to the point that repeating the whole procedure might well improve the result. This was affected in another eight years. Sheikh so Ali, how, how would they want it to do? You do it again. So now you have two things, accuracy and uh and precision, accuracy and precision in the translation. So going through all that and then do it again. SubhanAllah. Go ahead. Sheikh Ali, rahimahullah, worked full time as before in preparation and research without his previous notes. His thirst for exhaust for exhaustive detail, tenacity for the research required, and even the tone of his delivery of the text and commentary evoked in the translator something of what it evoked in him and materially helped. The translator translated from scratch everything he heard a second time on the other margin of his Quran's pages. The translator made audible recordings of nearly, of nearly every lesson with the Sheikh over the 15 years, which covered one page at a time, as well as many of the follow-up questions finalized in subsequent lessons. During the period of the final revision, the translator's wife, Um Sahel, re-listened to the recorded sessions of the second round as she had to the first, checking the English text word for word and giving corrections and advice. With the translator returning to Sheikh Ali for further re research on points requiring it. For the sake yeah, What I would say to us when we listen to that, you should know what goes in and have an idea of serious study. I've always respected the translations, translators' diligence in his work, whether it was the Reliance of the Traveler or his other writings. I've always respected the way he goes about in his writing and his research. Even on areas where we found things that we disagreed with, there was never a lack of reverence for the effort put to reach his conclusions. That is to be respected and to be uh, imit imitated. Mm. For the sake of thoroughness, she returned to six previous translations, something the translator had purposely abstained from doing the whole period of his own work to keep it free of received English renderings, three for the beauty of their English and three for comprehensiveness of the meaning from Arabic. But she found little to take from them and that all six had missed a number of key areas of the Arabic essential to its meaning, most of them falling in the traditional curriculum of Quranic Arabic under the heading of Balagha, 
or rhetoric, which Sheikh Ali had been accustomed to point out to the translator in virtually every verse. That is the difference in the translator's hermeneutic by talaki or personal instruction, questions and answers led to substantive differences from previous translations on many verses. These differences on questions of meaning do not arise from rarities, but from ubiquitous features found throughout the Quran, the, the very warp and woof of its mighty language, as shown by the number of times cited below that they appear in its text. And now, there is a big difference, as you can know just from doing it, and someone who learns and studies on their own, and someone who studies with a learned teacher who's aware of the subject. What one is going to get from reading on their own, and as opposed to one who reads with a teacher, is going to be a massive difference. And that difference will play out as one goes through a text with a living teacher. Mm. Now, the six translations chosen have been among the best, but wanting to know how such how general such gaps in meaning were in previous translations of the Quran, the translator contacted Professor of Islamic Studies in History, Ahmed Khan, at the American University in Cairo. He was preparing an article for a journal publication covering the whole sweep of previous English translations from George's cell in 1734 through the end of 2021 and had acquired copies of all of them from various lands, numbering some 135 works, excluding only partial translations and translations from languages other than Arabic, such as Urdu to English. The translator told him of the number of crucial areas of meanings missed by all six major translations his wife had examined. He replied that these, and likely more, were absent from the entire collection of previous translations his article would cover. If true, this means the present volume's interpretive, interpretive methodology has uncovered matters of Arabic meaning in the Quran that no previous English translation had seriously incorporated. We now turn to a number of the most significant to show their importance in understanding the number, excuse me, we now turn to a number of the most significant to show their importance in understanding the original text.